This is Line Direct. As the fall semester begins, so does football. We're looking forward to an amazing season. You know what they say, with hard work comes great determination. Here's Kelly with the rest of the story. The 2010 Greenville Lions under new head coach Sean Cooper had a disappointing season. Young players were asked to step up into huge roles for the Lions, who finished the year 0-10. The Lions this year, however, are returning a wealth of experience on both sides of the ball. They hope that their hard work during the offseason pays off underneath the Friday night lights. Maddie Crabtree met with Coach Cooper for a few questions. They're coming off a rough 2010 season. What have you done this year to make it a better year? Well, as a staff, we worked really hard, but more than that, our young guys that stepped up and competed last year on the varsity level really had a great offseason. Overall size has improved from 10 to 25 pounds per athlete. Our strength has gone way up. But the main thing is we've really bonded as a group and our kids have really care about one another and we have expectations of being successful. What are your other expectations for 2011? Uh, anything less than a playoff run for this year is really going to be a disappointment for us. And I know coming off of 0 10 season, that seems like a, a lofty goal for us, but that's not just a, a goal. That's really our expectations. We expect to win at least three district ball games, if not more, and that's what it takes to make it to the playoffs. And once we get through that, then anything's possible because we're going to get better and better every week that's a group of young men that we have out there competing with. How has the overall attitude of the line football changed since you've become the head coach? Day-to-day, uh, -day, the attitude is different, but the main thing that stays consistent around here is our guys really care about each other more than anything else. Uh, the dressing room, the locker room the atmosphere and all is more family tight that it's really important to the guys that they take care of their job so that their brothers out here together that they've made a commitment to don't have to pull up the slack for them. But that's probably the biggest thing is our kids have really bought into each other, the program, and the idea of us just really being a family. All right, thank you, Coach Cooper. Now back to you, Cheston. The Lions have put in the time for a good season. But you know who I really can't wait to see? Those Lady Lions. With the new coach, I'm sure they will have a winning season. Members of Line Direct recently met with the new coach. A district championship. That's the expectation of Coach Brennan, new head volleyball coach at GHS. Coach Brennan comes to Greenville with a wealth of experience, the bulk of it coming from her 14-year tenure at Roy City High School. Jared has the interview. Since you came to GHS in the summer, many students may not be aware of the coaching change. Welcome to GHS. What made you want to be in Greenville? Oh, um, I already knew a lot of the girls here from uh, when they were playing in middle school. I have a daughter the same age as the junior, and so I kind of followed them since they were in seventh grade, and I knew they were really good kids and good athletes. Who are some of the standout players, and what are some of the preseason highlights for the Lady Lions? Um, my standout players are um, juniors uh, Megan Boyd, juniors Mackenzie Cooper, junior... Uh, Jenny Hardaway, they're all hitters and doing a great job putting the ball down on the floor. Um, for example, Megan had 20 kills in last night's game. Um, Maddie Crabtree and Brianna Folly are doing a great job on the back row. And then uh, setters Kelly Moyer and Ashley Walden are doing a great job setting up our hitters. What should the Lady Lions fans expect for the season? Oh, uh, we start district on Friday, and our expectations for ourselves are to win district. So if that's anything short of that, we'll be disappointed. But uh, we're for sure being in the playoffs. We have no doubt. All right. Thanks, Coach. Now here's Justin. Coming up next, Ashley sat down with Chef Kiowski to discuss the culinary arts program and his plans for improvement over the next few years. But first, here's Amy with the backstory. This year, there is a new face in the Culinary Arts Lab at Greenville High School. Instructor Chef Kiowski brings a wealth of experience to the table, having worked in restaurants from Applebee's to Johnny Carino's and even the world-class Antares Restaurant in Reunion Tower. Ashley has the interview. You have worked at many prestigious restaurants in your career. What made you become a teacher? Well, in the, in the restaurant industry, uh, you know, we're constantly training new staff, and it's something that we always do. So it's always, it's always been part of the, part of the gig. But, uh, uh, but I've also always really enjoyed working with youth. It's, it's how I got my start in kitchen. Um, I was actually volunteering at a youth camp. 
Um, so I've always I've always had a heart and a passion for uh, working with young people. Uh, you know, I find them uh, the most moldable. You know, in, in the kitchen. Um, you know, when we have new staff come in, it, it tends to be uh, it tends to be the younger staff who doesn't have a lot of experience who you can really develop uh, into the style that you want to see and, and, and get the things out of them that you you want to see in the kitchen. So. Okay. Um, what are your plans for the culinary arts program at GHS? Uh, we have some pretty big plans here. Uh, uh, we should be getting a, a professional kitchen installed here on campus uh, relatively soon within the next couple of years and uh, uh, the real goal is to have uh, a student-run uh, restaurant on campus open to the public uh, within five years so that's the that's the goal of the program um, uh, and and the the real goal behind all of that is to uh, is to have students industry ready to give them real hands-on practical experience uh, give them an opportunity to see if this is a career that they'd like to pursue um, and also to give them some basic skills so that they could start uh, tomorrow. Uh, with big plans for the future, how are you going to set the foundation during your first three years? Uh, well, we're already doing that. We've, we've altered um, the curriculum a little bit um, so, that, um, so that what we're teaching in this, in this class is a first level. It's, it's the most basics of cooking um, and from you know, how, how we do our meat cookery, starch cookery, vegetable cookery, um, some basic sauces, um, basic fabrication. So, so we've we've stripped a lot of the things uh, out of it that may have been there before, so that we can set a cooking foundation. Sarah and McKenzie have this week's music and movie reviews. Wave's third album, King of the Beach, draws from an early post-punk band in a way that is fresh. 90s sounding vocals mixed with fuzzy guitars and doo-wop backup vocals blend together in a dan a rocking, dancey way. The songs are mostly superficial, the, uh, drawing on failed relationships or longing from a shallow perspective. Waves is not a band for deep thinking, something that they are highly aware of. This makes the album a great one for dancing to or screaming along with. King of the Beach is a highly addictive record and worth many repeated plays. You'll especially like King of the Beach if you like the Ya yeah, Ya yeah, Ya's, yeah, Blink-182, and the Pixies. The Help a dramatization of Catherine Stockett's novel gives us a glimpse into Jackson, Mississippi during the Civil Rights Movement of the 60s. The story follows Skeeter Felon through her first steps as a journalist. Skeeter is a young college graduate who is the new writer of a minor help column in the local paper. To glean household tips from her article, Skeeter begins to interview Abilene Clark, an African-American maid who has raised 17 white children. The obsession of separate but equal reaches a boiling point, and Skeeter is able to convince Abilene and her friend Minnie Jackson to tell stories for a book she's writing. The book is to be a collection of stories from maids, a collection of secrets that would rather die than be let known. This film gives us a perfect blend of drama and comic relief and is definitely a movie worth seeing. Here's Maddie with information on Drive One for Your School. Project Graduation is sponsoring Drive One for Your School with Southwest Board October 22nd. They give $20 to the school for just test driving a car and filling out a survey. In order to get our maximum number of participants, Project Graduation is spitting them out donated by Ford with other organizations. For every test driver that your organization can get to test drive a vehicle, your organization will get to $10, $15 if both cars are tested. If we hit our maximum and they double our money, your money will be doubled as well. We also want to invite other organizations to the event to have a fundraiser of their own. Have a car wash, sell items, whatever. Now for Lion Direct's tribute to 